K Wave, California. Yeah, Mark. Woo, okay. K Wave in the house. No. Um, yeah, I just like to be difficult. I love it because Ron tells me yesterday, he goes, oh, you're going to do it the other way around? I go, well, that's what you told me the first time. And he goes, oh, these guys are totally flexible. And then he comes in and throws me under a bus. <laughs> now, I, I have this weird thing when I'm on a stage and I see a funny little table like this. I'm like, what is that for? So I just figure it's for striking a pose, <laughs> right? Isn't that what that's a power stance? It's got to be what it's for. <sighs> yeah, I didn't want to go there. <laughs> Yeah, no, no Photoshop. Photoshop us in there later. <laughs> the radio pirate. <laughs> no, uh, like Ron said, I'm Mark Schaefer. I'm the uh, assistant general manager out at K-Wave 107.9 and KSDW 88.9 in San Diego. And uh, I, I kind of had trouble on, on where to start with this topic of unity. I, I want to give you just a little bit of a beef brief background on me so you can kind of understand where I come from in the area of unity. I talk to people all the time who get saved at a Calvary Chapel and stay at a Calvary Chapel because it's such a great church and the theology is so solid and the, you know, the, the life in the church is so solid. And my background is not quite that. So I got saved uh, at Mariner's Church through a little uh, organization called Salt Company, which was a young adult thing. I was 18 years old, fresh out of the Catholic Church, raised Catholic for 18 years. And um, I was invited to a home Bible study by my brother when I moved from Idaho back to Southern California. And I said, I don't want to go to a Bible study. I said, well, why not? And I go, I don't know. It's weird. What do you do? Right? And he goes, well, we open up the Bible. We read part of it. We talk about it. I'm like, okay, well, I was raised Catholic. I know the Bible is the word of God. I know Jesus is the son of God, but I'm not, you know, all Jesus. So I decided to go. And, and after going a few times, I finally one of, one of the guys who was a leader there, it was actually one of mine and my brother's roommates, said, hey, Mark, if you died tonight, where would you go? And I said, purgatory. Right? I'm not bad enough to go to hell, but I'm not good enough to go to heaven. And he, he was very patient. He didn't laugh like you did, Ben. Uh, and he said, he said, well, I have a real problem with that because purgatory is never mentioned in the Bible. And so I pictured myself like one of those cartoon characters, right, where your jaw hits the ground, just like, what? It's not in the Bible. And he said, no, but do you want to know tonight that if you died, you'd go to heaven? Yeah. So my testimony, I always thought, I don't really have a testimony. Right? I wasn't into drugs, rock and roll, any of that stuff, like sex, drugs, rock and roll, right? I wasn't into all that. I was a little bit of a partier at 18, but, but I can honestly say the first time after 18 years in the Catholic church, like seriously in the Catholic church, Catholic school, altar boy, everything, the first time I ever heard the gospel explained to me and I was asked if I wanted to receive Jesus, I said yes. And so I thought about what a testimony that is against the Catholic Church, just in my life. Not painting that for everyone, but in my life it was. So I want you to understand that I have a background of Catholicism and understanding that. Now I get saved through a ministry at Mariner's Church, and then quickly I find my way over to Calvary Chapel just because of proximity, and I didn't have a car. I heard it was a good church. And I lived literally a half mile, maybe, yeah, a half mile from there. All I had to do was walk up over 405 and I, uh, down Fairview, and I'm there. So I started walking to church on Sundays. And when I got in there, like so many, Chuck became Papa Chuck. Like he was saying things I had never heard before. And, and I, I was challenged once, actually, where's the guys from uh, Troy Warner's church? Brandon, where are you at? There you are. Uh, Troy Warner's dad, Guy Warner, was so instrumental in my life. Uh, I, I always say this. Someone asked me, Mark, name the three Bible studies that impacted you the most in your life. And I'm like, he goes, exactly. Now, who are the three people? And I go, easy. My mom, she taught me how to love. Chuck Smith, he taught me the Bible and taught me about God. And Guy Warner, because he gave me a chance in ministry. And those three people to this day are the three people that have impacted my life the most. I love my wife. I love my kids. I love, but it, for, for this and what I'm talking about here, they impacted my life, giving me that opportunity, right? And so that's my background. 
after going to school and being in the California area for a while, I went out to Kansas. I got a scholarship to play football out in Kansas, so I went out there to play football, and there was no Calvaries around. So I ended up at a little four-square church. And you know what I found out at Foursquare is they, they do a little bit of this and they do a little bit of that, right? And they're a little bit different, but they love Jesus. They love Jesus. And then when I came back, went right back to Calvary Chapel, got on staff. I was a high school pastor with Chuck, uh, one of the high school pastors. I was an assistant. Then I got hired to go down to Vista, right, Ben? Um, and... I was a high school pastor for Brian there for a few years, and then I moved to Northern California. When Brian went to England, he asked my wife and I to go, and we prayed about it and felt like God was saying no. And so God moved us up to Northern California, and there, again, there really weren't Calvary chapels in the area. And so we started going to different non-denominational churches and looking for churches. And all this is a roundabout way of saying, I've been around a lot of people who love Jesus, right? And so I want to start just right there. And that's, that's just the brief testimony of me, right? I do have a video I want to show you to start out, but now we're moving out of that. That's just, that's just a snapshot of Mark. I want to show you something that actually I was inspired to do by Pastor Tom this morning um, because it's one of those stories, and, and I want to share with you. This is one of the things that we always look for at K-Wave, and I want to encourage you to do that too. Are we ready back in the back? I think we are because I think we're on. And maybe we're not. I became somebody that was completely unrecognizable, even to myself. And I found myself involved in sins that I never even thought that I was capable of. My story begins in 2013 when I started in my career in law enforcement. My spirituality was already weak to begin with. So the little bit of armor that I did wear into the jail every day was quickly taken away from me. I found myself involved in a long-term affair with another married individual. I willingly gave up my marriage. And my God-fearing husband. And those are things that I never would have done if I had been walking with the Lord. I didn't know how to get out of this darkness and this grave that I had dug for myself. I had found myself turning back the radio to K-Wave, and that was something that I had listened to long before I stumbled down this dark road. Um, and I think I knew that it was a lifeline that I had that would bring me back to God and where I knew I could hear the truth. I could hear God's word instead of all the other voices in my head and in my life telling me that I should just be happy. God has taken me and not only taken these ashes and made me back to the person I was because that would have been an amazing story in and of itself, but he didn't do that. He took those ashes and he made me something beautiful, something worthy, something that is living truly and fully for him. I'm Chelsea and that's my K-Wave story. So let me ask you this, how many of you are believers in stories, right? And we get them all the time. Man, in, in this conference alone, I've heard so many stories. Ben was sharing me, with me a couple. You know, Tom, you shared some this morning. We've, we've had so many stories shared about Christian radio. And just the thing I always say, you guys are going to hear all of my one-liners within the two sessions I do because I'm, I'm a one-liner guy. I like to get people's attention. And... And my one liner about radio is this, it is such a Holy Spirit ministry. Can I get an amen? amen? Man, all we do is pump it out. That's all we do. We pump it out over the airwaves and the Holy Spirit takes it and turns it on in cars, right? Turns it on in the home, turns it on where people are. And the Holy Spirit knows exactly who needs to hear what. I serve young adults community a lot right now, and I've been in youth ministry for years, but now I'm young adults, much harder. Um, <laughs> but you talk to them, and they're like, oh, I don't really listen to the radio. I go, so you don't want a word from God? No, I listen to podcasts. Great. So you don't want a word from God? What do you mean? I go, I'm not saying you can't get a word from God, but when you go to a podcast, you know exactly what you're getting. When you turn on the radio, you don't, and it's a Holy Spirit ministry. And guess what? God knows what you need more than you know what you need. 
You know, and that's kind of one of my lines. It's like, no, it's a Holy Spirit ministry, man. Turn on the radio and see what God has to say to you right then. You cannot listen for 10 minutes without hearing from God, I feel like, if you're really listening. And so that's, that's one of my one-liners, just the Holy Spirit ministry. I want to share with you guys about unity today. And my heart, when I came to K-Wave, when I was asked to come on staff, I was, I was told, um, uh, Pastor Brian said, Mark, I need someone with a salesman mentality, but it's not for sales. And he, I go, okay, so you're talking relationships. And he said, yes, relationships. So I go in and I talk to Lance Emma, who's my boss, the GM. And um, I go, where do you want me to start? And he goes, I have had guys in your position that'll go to every Calvary Chapel. And we'll talk to guys at Calvary Chapel, but won't go anywhere else. He goes, I think the low-hanging fruit are other evangelical churches. And I said, I agree. And so I started networking with pastors. I started networking with uh, parachurch organizations. I started networking. That's what I did. I was in the title and escrow business for 17 years in sales and in sales management while I served at the church as youth pastor. <laughs> That's what I did. I loved it. Oh, my gosh. I used to go in. I loved it because I was a complete volunteer. I, didn't, I wasn't relying on a church. Like, yep, I'll be there. Yep, I'll minister to the kids. Yeah, I'll go to camp. <laughs> Right? <laughs> People thought I was crazy. One time I went in and, and um, one, of, one of the ladies I work with, she goes, oh, Mark, you're off next week. Where are you going? I'm going, I'm going to the Delta to be on a houseboat with 75 junior hires. And she's like, what? That doesn't sound like a vacation. I go, that's because you don't know. <laughs> you don't know what you're missing. So anyways, a um, couple of things that I want to say is that we are Perfectly, as Christian radio stations, because we cover a territory or an area, and if you're online, that area is now the world, through the World Wide Web, but because we're in a specific area, we are in the perfect place. We are perfectly positioned to be an instrument of unity in our listening area. Unity for the body of Christ. I'm going to give you a couple of quotes that you're going to probably love. Let me see if I can actually pull them up on here. I remember how to get out of these things. I did a short PowerPoint. It's not much. So you're going to open Holy Spirit Ministry. Okay, so this, this is the first one, or the first two, I guess. Oh, that's not the first one. This is supposed to be the first one. Okay, you guys have probably seen this before. Oh, gosh. Come on, Mark. Do it right. Play the slideshow so you don't have to see everything else, right? Slideshow. Play from the start. Now it's going to go to the start, though. Sorry, a little clunky. Holy Spirit ministry, next slide, next slide. Okay. In essentials, unity. In non-essentials, liberty. In all things, charity. How many of you guys have heard that before? Yeah. Very popular, right? Basically, in the essentials of evangelicalism, we're going to go through what that is. Um, and then the non-essentials, let's have some liberty, right? And liberty means... Being able to just get along, agreeing to disagree is fine as long as it's done in love because then the last line is in all things charity. Now, this next one I really like. This is Diedrich Bonhoeffer, and he says, the person who loves their idea of community will destroy community, but the person who loves those around them will create community. Isn't that a great quote? I have this pinned up on my wall in my office. Um, in plain terms, ditch your idea of the community being just like you and just love people. Love people around you. I was sharing with Robert um, earlier this week about how I had gone to a Bible study, or actually it was a prayer night, and it was described to him. It was one of the guys who works at Calvary who told me about it, and he, it was, his name's Neil, and he goes, yeah, I've been going to this tattoo place, and uh, there's a guy who was a pastor at Vineyard, and God called him to open a tattoo place because he was a tattoo artist before, and just love on the community. So I go, hey, can I go with you on Thursday night? And he said, yeah, sure. And then he ends up getting being on COVID watch because <laughs> one of his students at, at uh, the School of Worship uh, tested positive, so he couldn't go. So I just went by myself. And I walked into a place that was full of people with lots of tattoos. Most of them came from a... Um, uh, a background, a recovery background, and I walk in there and I go, hey, yeah, Neil told me about this, and they go, you're in the right place, and you know what? I sat there with people that looked nothing like me, 
that don't have any kind of background like me. But guess what? They love Jesus. All they did that night was love on people and love Jesus and worship Jesus. And we prayed together and we fellowship together and we communed together and it was awesome. And so for me, with my background in Catholicism and at these different churches, to me, I look for believers that love Jesus, right? And I start there. Um, I want to take you to John, ah, John 17, verses 20 through 23. And when I say John 17, what's the first word that comes to your mind when you think of John 17? No? Unity doesn't come right to mind. I know, I know for me, I always think unity. It's Jesus' high priestly prayer, right? And, but the whole thing that he gets to is it's all about, you know, there's great verses. Uh, Sanctify them by the truth. Your word is the truth, right? Uh, there's uh, 17.3. Shoot, that one's escaping me right now. But I want to look at verses 20 through 23. Where it says this. I do not ask for these alone. This is after Jesus has prayed for the uh, disciples. Now he's praying for those who would hear from the disciples, right? Us. I do not pray for these alone, but also for those who believe in me through their word. Verse 21, that they may be one, just as you, Father, are in me and I in you, that they also may be in us, so that the world may believe that you sent me. The glory that you gave, have given me, I have given to them that they may be one even as we are one, in, I in them and you in me, that they may become perfectly one. Again, he repeats this. So that the world may know that you have sent me and have loved them even as you have loved me. So verses 21 and 23. So that he says, this is the reason that I'm sending them out. This is the reason that the oneness is so important so that the world may believe. How many of you think that when the world thinks about the church, I'm talking about the unchurched, the non-Christians, think about the church, they think unity. No, they think diversity, right? They think, wow, why, why are there so many denominations, right? And what exactly is a non-denominational? Like, is, is Catholic a Christian? Is Mormon a Christian? Is a Christian, a, you know, a Seventh Day Adventist? Is a, you know, they see all this disjointedness, and so I do a lot of work with uh, one church, right? One church. I talk about one church a lot. I went to Las Vegas and I got schooled by a pastor there. So we had, a, we used to have a station in Vegas, and I would go out there, and I found a neat pastors network, and I'm going to get into pastor networks in just a minute, but. I found a neat network of pastors, and there was like 30 of us that would go out. And I would go out there for just like two or three days, but I'd always plan it around the times when they were getting together because they'd get together and pray for the city. And so I'd be in there, and I remember one time after we prayed and had a great time together, um, one of the guys pulled me aside, this African-American pastor. He's just full of fire. I loved him. And he said, Mark, how many churches are in Las Vegas? And I go, hmm. I think you probably know where I'm going with this, but I'm like, I don't know, Pastor, you'd know better than me. And he goes, there's one church. There's one church in Las Vegas. Jesus is the head of that one church. And you know what? That just ministered to me. Again, being from a radio perspective or being there representing the radio, it's like we are just perfectly positioned to be an instrument of unity. How many of you guys have talked to people who listen to your station who don't go to your church or a church that's like yours? Right? All the time. All the time. We get calls at, on pastor's perspective from Mormons, from Catholics. All the time. We try and love on them, you know? We get calls from, uh, you're going to see a video, I'm going to show you a video of some pastors, and uh, one of them's a Assemblies of God pastor. You know, I've got one from another non-denominational who's in uh, southeast LA. He's got tattoos all over his face. He's got a great testimony to share. Um, you know, I've got, I've got a Calvary pastor in there, and I'm trying to think who's the first. Oh, the first one is another non-denominational non -denominational church that was started by a hockey player. You know, <laughs> watermark OC. 
But these things are great. And, and I want you to see that through these networks of pastors, what I try to do to be that instrument of unity is I try to find pastor meetings. Wherever they're meeting within our listening area, I try to go to those meetings. Right? And the reason is I want to see where evangelical pastors are getting together. When I first started at K-Wave, um, it was back when Franklin Graham, well, it was probably a year, year and a half, maybe two years in, but Franklin Graham was going to every state capitol. Do you remember that? He went to every state capitol to pray on the steps of the capitol. Well, you guys all know where K-Wave is in Southern California. You know where Sacramento is, right? Quite a ways away. So I went to Lance and I said, you know what? I've been praying. K-Wave needs to be there. And he said, absolutely not. And I said, what? No, no, K-Wave needs to be there. And he said, Mark, it's too far away. It's not our listening area. And I said, Lance, I've been walking with the Lord for over 30 years, and I have never seen evangelicals meet on the steps of the Capitol for prayer. This is a K-Wave event. We need to be there. And he said, well, how much is it going to cost me, right? True GM. <laughs> and I said, look, I will take the K-Way van, and I'll drive up, so no flight. I'll take Chad with me. Chad will just work his normal hours in the day. We'll stay at his parents' house, and you just have to buy us lunch every day. So he said, okay. So we drive up there all the way up. We, we stay at his parents' house that night. They live in Elk Grove, so it's a little ways away. In the morning, we take off to go to the Capitol. I'm not kidding. We pull up to the Capitol. Franklin Graham's buses are there, but no one's there yet. This is hours before the event. We pull up in the K-Way van, and I park, and me and Chad get out of the car. We start walking over to where the action is at, where they're starting to set up for Franklin Graham, and um, the first person we see comes running up going, K-Wave, oh my gosh, K-Wave is here. I'm from Huntington Beach. I listen to K-Wave every day, and I just said, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. If you know anything about California, Air One, K-Love, 30 miles from there. They're in Rockland. Okay? They weren't there. Not saying anything. I'm just saying God told me. I'm not saying anything while I'm saying something. Uh, but God told me that we need to be there. We need to be. I've never seen evangelicals there like that. And, man, we had a presence there. And one of the pictures of my slides tomorrow, I think, is me interviewing Franklin Graham at that. So it's just really cool. So anyways, let me play you this next video that I have, if I can do this. Come on. Where's my little mouse thing? No, let me try this again. That didn't work either. There we go. Yeah? No? It's not agreeing with me, Marshall. Oh, there it goes. Okay. Next video. Here it is. Kind of starts fast. So I'm just going to. You ready on the sound back there? This one comes in hot. <laughs> Encouragement to my life. I just thank God so much for K-Wave. Hi. Sorry, in the George middle. Hansen. I pastor Mesa Church. Let me try this Watermark. Again. This is Ben Appleby from Watermark OC Church in Costa Mesa. I just want to say a big thank you to K-Wave for being adaptable and relevant during unprecedented times. The fact that they're giving local church pastors like me a platform to reach people live on the radio, YouTube, and Facebook was an unbelievable response to unbelievable times. Thank you, K-Wave, and thank you, listeners, for being a part of this community. Hi, my name's Mike Maiola, and I have the privilege of serving as the pastor at Mission Viejo Christian Church. K-Wave's been a huge impact in my life, uh, number one, just with the Word of God, being able to get the Word anytime, at any place. Um, going back and forth to meetings or running into the grocery store. The impact of the word on, on the radio has been a huge personal impact in my walk with Jesus. And then secondly, K-Way has been a huge impact for us uh, with the National Day of Prayer and supporting in prayer and praying together, um, being able to broadcast that um, over the airwaves uh, once a year has just been a huge encouragement to my life. I just thank God so much for K-Wave. Hi, my name is George Hansen, and I pastor Mesa Church in Orange County, California. K-Wave has given local pastors an opportunity to show unity in the body of Christ by participating in Come Together Live, Scripture of the Day, and other connections to serve. I'm so thankful for it. In fact, building a broader relationship with the body of Christ and the listenership of K-Wave has helped me to think about the impact beyond just the leadership of my local church. And it's always fun to hear people from my congregation say, 
Oh, I heard you on K-Wave. I think it builds their perspective too. Hi, I'm Jason Aguilar, and I'm the pastor of Arise Church in Irvine, California. And we are so privileged and honored to be a part of K-Wave family. Uh, I've been able to be a part of to Come Together Live and uh, been able to serve to uh, share the word uh, on several mornings. And it's been such a blessing to our church. Um, so many people uh, come from different places in our church, for our community church, and it's beautiful for them to be able to listen to the word in the mornings and also be a part of the other um, uh, pastors and leaders who come on. And it's just really, really wonderful to see how the blessing of God is, is commanded in the midst of unity. And that's what K-Wave does. It's bringing the body of Christ together to share in the word and in worship. And so we're very honored to be a part of the K-Wave family. Well, it's always a, a privilege for me as a pastor to be able to take part and to come together live on, on K-Wave radio. And it's a joy to get to do it. And I tell you, one of the things that helps me as a pastor is that it, it lifts my eyes off of just my community at Living Word and onto the greater community that's out there. And I have to realize there's people listening on the radio in their cars that are going through difficult times, that are going through circumstances, and I get the privilege of speaking the Word into their lives. It's a joy and it really forces me into prayer because I only get about a minute or so to do it. My church family loves it too. First, they, it kind of draws us together in unity. They love to hear Papa on the radio, so that's kind of neat. But the other part is I've had many come to me and say they're praying when they hear me on air for those who are listening, for those who hear it. And to me, that does my heart good too. So they're joining in the same ministry with me. So it's always a blessing to be on K-Wave and to come together live. Whenever they ask, I say, amen, I want to do it. So that's a great joy. God bless you. Bye-bye. So here's a good testimony. I was uh, driving over to drop off my kids, um, and K-Wave 107.9 gave me a phone call to do a devotional on the radio. And such a great testimony comes out of this because I felt unprepared. I felt like I wasn't ready for it. Um, I didn't have my Bible with me, and I was trying to rush to get back home so I can be in my office where I can share the word from. But it didn't happen. I had to pull over on the side of the road and do this devotional. And the devotional was out of uh, out of Psalms, and it was a devotional of being patient and waiting and trusting in the Lord. And so as we're doing this devotional, Perez introduces the whole situation, and um, there is a listener who is listening that's afflicted in her life. And so we did the devotional, and um, the next day, I get a phone call from this woman who wants to give testimony of what took place in her life. So she calls me, and she calls the church, and I answer the phone, and she goes, is this Living Way Christian Fellowship? I said, yes. And she says, I'm looking for Pastor Andres. I said, yeah, that's me. And she goes, hey, um, are you, is this your cell phone? I go, yes. She goes, are you driving? I go, yes. She goes, are you dropping off your kids? And I go, I go, hey, what's going on? I go, so I realized that she had heard the uh, devotion on K with it. So she started giving testimony how she was in such a, uh, such a place of affliction that she wanted to take her own life. And she had enough pills to do it. She had enough pills to actually take down some elephants. But through the word, through the message, through God's Holy Spirit working through his word, uh, this woman heard this devotional and was really just encouraged by the Lord and was strengthened not to take her life, but to put those pills away and continue to trust him and waiting and seeking the Lord. So this is just an amazing testimony to the glory of God, um, that God's word is powerful and really God in a sense is not concerned about my appearance, um, but really just trusting him um, and trusting his word. So this is just a great testimony for the glory of God. Well, let's give God a hand for that one, right? Just amazing. So we don't always call people last minute and ask them to do that. Uh, Pastor Andreas was, um, he's one of my go-to guys when other people might forget that they were on that morning. So I, I want to share with you a little bit about Come Together Live, but um, let me pull this up just so we got something to look at. You can look at this handsome man. This is part Pastor Mark Ambrose, and I'm going to tell you about him in a little bit. But um, yeah, so with Come Together Live, we started this right when COVID started. And we wanted, the original idea was, man, I want to encourage people. Because in the morning, everyone was waking up at home, right? We were all locked down. Um, we, could, we didn't have any toilet paper, and people just needed encouragement. <laughs> <laughs> That's some rough times right there. Um, so we decided, well, let, what can we do live? So I got together with my engineers, and we kind of 
put this together and I came up with a graphic, a cool puzzle piece of Come Together Live. And, and we started doing this um, and I just started reaching out to a network of pastors. And the whole thing was we want something live. We want it to be live so that we can get instant feedback from people. And, and man, this has grown into an animal. I mean, we have pastors calling and say, when can I be on next? When can I be on next? Right? We keep expanding our network of pastors to be able to do this because what we want to do is feature local churches. And, and in doing this, what we're doing is we're drawing in these churches and saying in, in a weird way, and I hate putting this way, it this way, so if you guys can help me come up with another way to put this, but we've kind of put the K-Wave stamp of approval on these churches. Like These are like-minded churches in that these are pastors who love Jesus. Our theology is in the essentials, right? Wait, going back to the Augustine quote, how's, how's it go again? <laughs> in the essentials, unity. Um, in non-essentials, liberty. liberty, and in all things, charity. Yeah. So these are people that line up with that. And let me tell you, when I go about looking for pastors that I will align with in that sense, the best thing I have to fall back on um, is the Apostles' Creed. So last year, uh, 2020, remember we all had such high hopes for 2020 going in. And it was like, oh, clear vision, 2020, this is awesome. And I started out the year, and God just kept putting the word unity on my heart. Unity, unity. So I wrote it real big on my calendar, right? Unity. And we started out, and I started going to pastors. In fact, I'm going to click over. Can I go to that? I'm going to jump through a couple of these real quick, and I'll go back to them. But this, this was one of the meetings we had just before COVID. It was a pastor's meeting, big pastor's meeting with this group called Trellis. And they brought all these leaders together from all over Orange County. We were going to do these once a month. But this one, this one was in March, early March. <laughs> we all know what happened in the middle of March. And so when COVID hit, I remember just, Lord, I thought this year was going to be about unity. I could have swore I heard from you unity. Like, Lord, I don't know what's going on. Now we can't even meet. I can't even get together with my brother. Unity is not Zoom. Can I get an amen? <sighs> so as the year progressed... My joke is last year, the only thing I did, I'm an outreach guy, right? I do all the promotions. So I'm out at the Christian concerts. I'm out at the festivals. I'm out at all these things. And all I did last year was food drives, blood drives, and toy drives. That was it. <laughs> but you know what? The community was coming to us. The community that needed food was coming to our campus every week. We had a food drive every Saturday. Minister do thousands of families to, through two different organizations. I'll get through that or to you. I'll get back to that tomorrow when I do my next talk. We also did blood drives um, because all the schools had shut down. That's where the Red Cross gets most of their blood. So the Red Cross was, or, or actually, no, they didn't knock on my door. I called them. I said, hey, here's something that we can do. We, we know how important blood is, right? Because the blood of Jesus saved every one of us. So we know how important blood is. So I called the Red Cross and I said, hey, can I set up a blood drive? They go, oh my gosh, yes. Can we please, will you do one once a month? Can we do them at other churches? Can you help us do that? So we set up blood drives once a month. Uh, and then uh, we had done a toy drive the year before with the Orange County Fire Authority, which is uh, basically like a sheriff's department. It handles the whole county except for a few cities that have their own fire so about 27 cities in Orange County, huge fire department, right? And ABC Channel 7 News and K-Wave. And that's the three logos that go out on the flyer. Subaru goes out on there too, because they're a major sponsor. But just, we had this opportunity to toy drive. The first year we gave out, I think 57,000 toys that were collected from the community, housed at K-Wave, or at actually Calvary Costa Mesa, we have a distribution there, our Calvary, um, uh, Calvary Chapel distribution, book distribution. So we have a warehouse, so we were able to uh, take them in there, sort them, and then hand them out to nonprofits in the area that were vetted nonprofits. Well, this year, then last year, they're like, oh, we're not going to be able to do it because of COVID. And we're like, well, we're in. We'll do it. If you give us the green light, we'll do it. And the firehouse said, oh, we can't receive any toys at a firehouse. We can't risk that with our first responders. And we go, We'll receive them. 
You can have people drop them off at the warehouse. Um, we'll do toy collections at this church, this church, and our church. And they're like, really? Yeah, we'll just do it. So K-Wave took a more active part in the collection of toys uh, because there was less that we could do and ABC Channel 7 had nothing to do with it. We collected 17,000 toys and we gave out 17,000 toys. And we were able to do that. And at the very end of it, they, the fire department always says, hey, we want to know your numbers. And so I said, okay. We took in, you know, 17,250 toys. We gave out 17,257 toys because someone gave us some other ones. I don't know. But we gave them that. I go, but the number I'm most proud of, zero cases of COVID. And I got the opportunity. Hold that applause. Wait for one second. I got that opportunity to say, you guys, this is not Yay, this is a miracle. It's a miracle from God that there was no cases of COVID transmitted when we handled 17,000 toys from the community. Now you can clap. Amen. <laughs> right? <laughs> God, it was miraculous. But what I saw through that is unity. We got together with Saddleback Church to do food distributions. We got together with Power of One to do food distributions. We had people coming onto the grounds. We were able to pray for so many people. We haven't seen that many salvations on the campus of Calvary Chapel Costa Mesa since probably late 70s, early 80s. Seriously, we had thousands of people come to know Jesus last year through food drives and just praying for him, through the blood drives and praying for him. And so God showed us unity through that. Now, I told you that um, I like the Apostles' Creed. I want to read it to you, the modern version of it. Just when I do the vetting of churches, because we do that, um, not just for our radio programs, but for, for any churches that we'll work with to put you know, uh, on our events page if they have events or things like that. Uh, so I pinned up this at the beginning of last year before COVID too, but the Apostles' Creed, right? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, I believe in Jesus Christ, his only son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church. I say it that way for a reason. Um, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, amen, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting, amen. And it says down here at the bottom, the word Catholic in the Apostles' Creed does not mean Roman Catholic Church, but the true church of Jesus Christ, the Big C Universal Church. Why is this creed important? It says, while not actually written by the apostles that we know of, the Apostles' Creed is the oldest known creed of the church. It provides a synopsis of faithful Christian beliefs. It dates back to 140 AD at least and provides a type of format for future creeds. If you're going to memorize a creed, memorize this one. I remember being in the Roman Catholic Church and having to memorize this for my catechism. But yeah, I look to this and just go, okay, these are the essentials. Right? These are the essentials. The non-essentials I can have liberty in. Right? But these are the essentials. And I won't work with the church unless these are part of that church. So I'm going to go through a couple of these churches. Um, starting with this one. This is Pacific Coast Church down in San Clemente, Pastor Mark Ambrose. Pastor Mark Ambrose got saved at Calvary Chapel. He now runs Pacific. <laughs> You're going to see this as a theme. I go out and meet these pastors all the time and say, oh my gosh, Calvary was so instrumental in my life. Chuck Smith was so instrumental in my life. He got saved at a Calvary. Uh, the next one is Miles McPherson. How many of you know Miles? Okay, you've heard of him. Miles was uh, Mike McIntosh's youth pastor when I was a youth pastor in Vista. He and I used to run camps together. Bill Welsh's church. I just love this picture. Doesn't that K-Way van look so good in front of Refuge Church? <laughs> this, uh, I told you a little bit about this. So this group is called Trellis. And trellis is basically, if you're thinking in garden terms, it's a support, right? So what this group is, is they support evangelical churches only in the city of Costa Mesa. And so there's 52 evangelical churches in Costa Mesa, and 45 of them are part of trellis. Yeah, and it's just awesome to see. 
I went to one of the nights of worship that they had everyone come. They don't do it very often. They call it one voice. And we had this night of worship, and it was just amazing. We all went up and hung crosses from our churches, and everyone's up there looking at the different crosses and the different churches, and it was just such a beautiful sign of unity that the next year I asked if we could host it at Costa Mesa, at Calvary Costa Mesa. So it was year of COVID, but we still did it. We just did it outside. It was just awesome. Uh, this is Pastor Lee. Pastor Lee runs Templo Calvario in Santa Ana. It is the largest uh, Hispanic church um, in Santa Ana. This guy is a wonderful brother in the Lord. Just love Pastor Lee. Uh, this is Bogdan Kipko. Okay, Bogdan Kipko has a little Baptist church called Forward Church in Irvine. Great guy, thick Russian accent, just a mover and a shaker. Love him. Here is uh, Fountain of Life Church. Why am I missing this pastor's name? Mm. I should have wrote it down. So Fountain Life Church is a non-denominational church in Fountain Valley, and this is him doing a devotional. Uh, because of COVID, we couldn't have anyone in our studios, so we had to go outside of the studio, so this is out back of the K-Way building, uh, shooting a video for the devotion. You might know, some guys might know this guy. Anyone? Holland Davis? So Holland, this was actually taken at one of our pastors meetings, a group of pastors, evangelical pastors get together in San Clemente. And so Holland's a part of that. And so I go to that meeting because it's in our area. That's Pastor Mike Maiolo. He was on the uh, video, uh, Mission Viejo Christian Church, also got saved through a ministry of Calvary. We did some wonderful, uh, he was a great impetus for unity in his area too. He does a national day of prayer. You heard him mention that, that we promoted on K-Wave. He had 88 churches in South Orange County come together for National Day of Prayer event where we had like 3,000 people there and, uh, and had the uh, TK Burger truck there. That was, that was kind of a draw. But uh, no, it was, it was great. He had different ministry booths that we would pray together. Uh, he was always, he'd always have me up on stage to be one of the pastors that prayed. And then we, he would send people out. If you want to pray for first responders, go over here. If you want to pray for the military, go over here. If you want to pray for our hospitals, go over here. If you want to pray for the schools, go over here. And he had all these booths, like really great way of doing National Day of Prayer that ended up being like a three to four hour event, which was a lot of fun. This is Pastor Andreas Huerta. Pastor Andreas uh, came to know Jesus while he was in prison uh, being charged with the six murders. Uh, he was a gang leader in Maywood, California. His testimony is incredible. Um, but he's the most humble man, and this man loves Jesus so much. I met him at a Calvary Pastors Conference in Costa Mesa because he came with uh, David Zamora uh, because he's another Living Way Church that was launched out of, I think, was Zamora launched out of, oh, Robert's not here. It's either launched out of Rosales' church or Raul Reese's church. But they now have, this is Pastor Jesse Cuaron is the other one, who is Living Way Hemet, and just great brothers. I mean, I, Andreas came to visit me one time down in Orange County, and um, he came to my house, and then we went out to eat down on Balboa Island. <laughs> and he goes, come on, Mark, let's go for a walk. So we go walking around, and he's just the happiest guy. And, and as we'd walk by people, they'd be like, whoa, look. <laughs> this guy looks mean, right? He's got tattoos on his face and everything. He's all, how you doing, brother? Every time I call, I, I joke with whoever I'm with. I'm like, watch, he's going to answer, brother Mark. That's how he always answers when I call him. Um, but he has just, he encapsulates that, that scripture, he who is forgiven much loves much. This man loves Jesus. This man loves Jesus and just tells incredible stories. He's driven me around his neighborhood, too. He told God, I will serve you any, I'll give my life to you, and I will serve you anywhere except Maywood. Guess where his church is? <laughs> this is uh, Dr. J. Smith. J. Smith is one of the uh, teachers at Veritas. Uh, I do a lot of work with Veritas as well, which is a seminary. Some of you guys probably know the name. Um, learned a lot from that man. He's, he calls himself a polemist. Have you guys heard that? So there's an apologist, which means to defend your faith, and a polemist is someone who goes on the offensive. 
So he talks, he was raised in India in a very Muslim section of India. And so uh, he talks to Muslims and he confronts Muslims and makes them defend their faith because most Muslims you meet are polemists. They'll come after you and demand you, you know, to, to prove your faith. But if you go on the offensive against him, I learned a lot from that man. It's awesome. Uh, this is actually pastor of the church that I go to. I go to Grace Fellowship Church, which is another non-denominational church in Costa Mesa. Uh, that's Pastor Dave Gunlock. That's him in doing scriptures of the day. Uh, next, I love this picture. So Jarrett Petro is the one. Yes. To the left, uh, Jarrett was on staff at Calvary Costa Mesa at the time, uh, doing men's ministry. Then we have Pastor Eric Wayman as the tall one there. He is Lighthouse Church in Costa Mesa. Jordan Hansen was on the screen just a minute ago, and he does Mesa Church at Vanguard University. And then the other one is Ian, uh, Ian Stevenson, and he's the one who runs Trellis, and he's from um, the Crossing Church in Costa Mesa. And Ian is kind of the catalyst. Ian and Eric, actually, the tall one, and then the one with the glasses on. Well, they all have glasses except for... Uh, <laughs> so uh, Eric and Ian were the ones who thought up Trellis and got it going. And Lighthouse Church is just a small church in, in Costa Mesa. Newport Mesa Church is probably about seven, 800 people. Lighthouse is probably about 400 people. Um, yeah, so I know, I know, I'm sorry. I'm from Southern California. I keep forgetting. Okay, yeah. <laughs> They're great-sized churches. <laughs> They're just not the mega churches. Uh, how many of you guys know this guy? Bill Buffington, Calvary Chapel, Inglewood. This is Bill coming in to do um, uh, Ask Anything, which was a feature we had before, too. Uh, Pastor Pat Girolin is a Baptist church, Hope Crossing, down in South County. Another good friend of ours. Uh, and then this was uh, Life Hope Church in Corona, Pastor Pat and his wife went out to do a food distribution there. And that's, that's all the pastors. I just wanted to kind of go through that with you and just share with you some of the relationships that I've built and some of the pastors that we work with. And just to encourage you guys, you know what? Being in that place within your community to be able to be that impetus for unity in the church to, in the hopes that the world would see the difference in us is Jesus. It's all surrounded around Jesus. We can work together with other churches because Jesus commanded us to. I loved what um, Pastor Jason Aguilar said. He said, I love, by the way, when we did that video, I just asked them, I said, I'm going to a radio conference, say whatever you want, 30 seconds. Every one of them did two minutes, I think. They didn't do 30 seconds, but you know pastors. Um, but I said, say whatever you want on that. I didn't, I didn't coach them that I was teaching on unity or anything, and three times unity was brought up, three times community was brought up in, in that series of videos, and I just love that because they see what we're out to do, what we're trying to do. We're trying to be that bridge within our community of saying, let's be one church. Let's see what God can do with one church, and so we offer Come Together Live, which is our daily show. We do we have different pastors in on pastor's perspective from time to time, and then we do um, our, our scripture of the day, which is something that any of you guys can do. Getting local pastors, the reason we like to feature local pastors is that so listeners, one, it draws in other listeners because those pastors will say, hey, I'm going to be on K-Wave, listen, right? And, and then they get calls from people in their church saying, I heard you, I heard you on K-Wave, or hey, I'm going to be on K-Wave's video, so watch. And we get people watching and we get people commenting, that's my pastor, you know? <laughs> so it's really awesome in that way, but just bringing them together and saying, this is, this is who we are, right? We're a body of Christ. And as a body can't function, you can, you can cut an arm off and throw it over there, but it's not going to do anything once it's over there. We're a body of Christ. We need to be united together under the headship of Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let me pray for us. Lord Jesus, thank you for this time. Thank you for your word. Thank you that you instruct us and you lead us by your Holy Spirit, God. May we be in step with you, in tune with you. Lord, we don't want to get ahead of you, and we don't want to fall beside. We don't want to do something just because it sounds good to do it. We want to do it because we're led by your Spirit. So, Father, we pray that you would continue to lead us and guide us in this Holy Spirit ministry of radio. 
And Lord, that we would have our eyes open to what you are doing. Lord, that we might glorify you in all that we say and do. And we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. And now we're doing Q&A? Yeah. Okay. If that's going to work. Anybody have any questions for Mark on unity and dealing with other churches in your community? Uh, Mark Ramirez of Lamp, Fredericksburg, Virginia. We, we only play Calvary Chapel, people, mm -hmm. but you're giving me some uh, good um, advice. And so what more do you vet? How do you vet them besides... I mean, I know you use that, but do you talk to them? Yes. Do you, do you go to videos? Do you hear what they're... The first thing I do is I check out their website. That's a great yeah. question. I go to their website because they all have a statement of faith, right? If my statement of faith doesn't align with their statement of faith, I won't reach out to them or I won't... Res well, I'll respond back, but I'll do it graciously uh, with a gracious no, <laughs> right? But then from there, then I always meet with the pastor. So I go out and I just, I just meet with them. Um, and I'll usually take someone else with me just because I can. You know, and I'll say, hey, let's grab coffee. I want to hear what your church is doing. Because this is also a great way for us to populate our events page. And so I'll go out and I'll meet with them and I'll see what their church is doing. And that's where I can really get a feel for their heart. Like the guys that I featured on here have hearts that are just, man, they want Jesus' kingdom to come. And I said, let's build it together. I, I forgot to give you my famous one-liner. This one's my favorite one. If we're going to spend eternity in heaven together, do you think we can work together here on earth? Really? I mean, when you think about that, we're going to be together in heaven forever. Let's do God's work together here on earth. Yeah. Yeah, I meet with uh, local pastors in our area, too, non-Calvary guys. And so we've been meeting for almost two years. That's awesome. So maybe, you know, we'll pray about it. Maybe we can do that like one minute. Right, yeah. The one-minute scripture of the day. Yeah, uh, I think the stuff for me when I'm looking at other programming, like uh, I have Chuck Swindoll on. Well, why do I have him on? Uh, where's, oh, Robert Sardi. The last, when we were in Houston, he had mentioned something about unity. Yeah. And I thought, dang, I got a lot of Baptist. Anybody know the South? That's where we live. We're in the South. What, what, what does the South grow? We grow Baptists. <laughs> Cotton and Baptist. <laughs> and tobacco. But yes. And tobacco. So I thought, well, what pastor that I doctrinally agree with? Because I have this thing about not confusing my listeners. I, I can't stand that. So I'm not going to put this guy on that I would confuse the listener to the next guy. That's kind of a basic idea. But I thought, well, all right, Chuck Swindoll. I mean, the guy is, I love to listen to him. He, he cracks <laughs> me up. So I, I hooked Baptist into the station by having Chuck Swindoll. Yeah. And now they're going to stick around for the other Bible teaching yeah. because they're there. So it's, you, you know, you're a pastor. What I want to communicate in my community, but really doctrinally and not to confuse them. So not that I'm disagreeing yeah. with you. But I am. No, just. <laughs> well, my whole thing is do what God tells you to do, right? <laughs> yep. So, Mark, I grew up in East LA and 96% uh, Hispanic and whatnot. Did you know Andreas? No. <laughs> he was from the other gang. We, no. <laughs> Wrong we gang. Land, bro. So, so, here's the thing um, Apostles' Creed. So, here I am, a little Pentecostal kid, you know, in East L.A., attending a little Pentecostal church. And so we are, uh, you learn to box early, you know, it's Catholic, Protestant, yeah. and this and that. Yeah. And later on as an adult, I had these prejudices with me. So the Apostles' Creed, when it said the Catholic church, just completely threw me off. I left it off for all my years, you know. But you gave it a new word. Yeah. Catholic. 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 That's actually, yeah. And, and the Catholic church means the one church. And that's actually how it's said, Catholic. Well, dude, that is wonderful. Yeah. Because it frees you on the other on the other sides of that one little thing you yeah. want to throw the whole <laughs> kid in the bathtub out. Listen, but I I, I don't want to um, make it sound like we're against RCs, right? Because in my community we have a lot of uh, Northerners that move down. We have Roman Catholicism, and I was able to bridge a gap in that they do a pro life thing. 
Okay, the Roman Catholics do it, I think, sometimes better than the Protestants do in this one topic, right? But I was able to be the kind of a, um, well, for a while, the only Protestant there as a pastor. In fact, we held the pro-life vigil at our church in a prayer night. Did you? And um, I wouldn't call him father. <laughs> I don't play that game. Call man no father. <laughs> Padre. <laughs> Your eminence. You know. <laughs> but there was a bridge there between our, our church there, and they still reach out to us for that and let us know about the pro-life things that are in our... I think there are things that we can try our best. Right. Um, and coming out of Roman Catholicism, you understand that. Yeah. And what the Word of God will do to that community. So... Look, if we can try to do that, great. I'm not saying that we're going to leave our doc. Everybody got that? That's not what it's about. Yeah. Um, hold fast to the word. Right. But at some point, do the best we can to reach out. Well, and that's the thing. When you're talking to an RC, which I've never called him that. I'm going to I like that. I'm it's start a kinder, to, gentler yeah, way right? to say it. When I, when I'm talking to him, what, what I realize is, man, as a, it, Christianity came easy to me because being raised in the Catholic Church. I knew the Bible was the Word of God. I knew Jesus was the Son of God. I knew He died on a cross. I knew He was raised three days afterwards. You know, I believed in the Trinity. All the pieces were there. I just didn't know He was a personal God and wanted a personal relationship. So when you're talking to Catholics, remember that. They believe the Bible's the Word of God. Don't get caught up in the Apocrypha. Don't worry about all that. Point out things in the word of God. I always take Catholics to, I think we talked about this at breakfast, Matthew chapter six, you know, right before Jesus tells them the, the prayer, our father, he says, don't pray in vain repetition as the Gentiles do, because they think they'll be heard for their many words. Instead, pray in this manner, our father who art in heaven. Do you know how many priests I went to? And they said, go say 10, our fathers, 12 hail Marys and three glory bees. And that's your penance. It's like, well, wait, it says right here, don't do vain repetition, right? So, yeah. And then uh, another thing real quick. This morning when Robert and I went to get bagels right down the street here, and we're standing in line, it's taken our order a while because we had to feed all you guys, right? Um, <laughs> and there's a guy standing there, this big New Yorker guy, look, looked like mob, could have been mob, right? But he comes up and he goes, oh, what are you guys doing? I go, oh, we're having a, a Christian radio conference just up the street here. He goes, oh, okay. He goes, yeah, I was just at a, a life event with the Catholic Church. Um, where the Pope sent some emissaries. It was really cool. And I started commending him on it. That's awesome. You know, but like you said, just bridging that gap. They do that well. But just this morning, we had that conversation with the guy. And just, uh, yeah, it, it's awesome. It's awesome to work together. Anybody else on Unity? You're like, I'm done with Unity. <laughs> yes. Okay. I'm a little disappointed, though. Um, no question? Come on, James. Well, no, he, oh, okay. he's banned for a while. <laughs> <laughs> he has to give up. Did I keep chance. you guys awake? Do you really have one? It's all right. So, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Uh, the, the question, I think they answered it, but you're using these other churches for one-minute spots. Are you putting them on in that 25-minute slot? Are you giving them the whole thing? No, no, because most of them can't afford it, or we don't really have this. But a through 40. it, I have. Well, <laughs> we play them for free, bro. <laughs> <laughs> so actually, I have picked up a few Saturday programs, uh, okay. once a week programs uh, with local pastors through that. And that's what I was going to ask you. Do you do like a weekend event? Let these guys, like you know, one of those guys, come in and say, "Hey, man, I got a thirty-minute slot. Would you like to fill this every week?" And that would be just like doing a Sunday message. Usually what you know, it is or... is they'll reach out to, they'll, they'll mention it to me. Hey, how would I get on K-Wave? Okay. And then we just lay out what the rate is and what times are available. And, and yeah, I've gotten rid, gotten rid of, I almost said gotten rid of. <laughs> I have booked four or five shows that way. Okay. Yeah. Because and I have a few more that want them and they're just trying to get there. And yeah. Because we, there's lots of churches that are like, and we believe, you know, like you, we're, it's not Calvary Chapel or, or hell. Yeah. It's, you know, the body of Christ. But convincing my pastor, like, hey, you say you believe that they're going to heaven, but you don't want them to give the message because they don't give it your way. Yeah. Right? How did you overcome that obstacle? 
Yeah, uh, again, I, I centered it around what I read you in John 17 and Jesus saying, the world will know because of your love, right? I want the world to know because we're united, I want the world to see us as one church. I don't want the world to see us as disjointed. And so for me, it wasn't a hard hurdle to get over because I've met people in different areas. I told the story about the ta tattoo parlor, right? Those guys love Jesus. And that's all I want. I want people who love Jesus, right? And, and again, it goes back to the, the Augustine quote, you know, in the essentials, unity. In the non-essentials, liberty. But in all things, love, charity, right? Yeah, in all things. Didn't have to sell it to him. <laughs> He's, well, my GM is the one who told me to go out and, and do this. And so I come, yeah, and I vet the pastors and I vet their teachings, and then I present it to him, and it's, it's their choice. I never make the decision to put someone on. Yeah. I actually wanted to follow up a little bit on that. You said you put a lot of programs on for free. The local churches that you vet and think would be a good fit would be a good way to possibly help with revenue stream for your station as well. Maybe start them out even on the weekend if they can't afford to do a m Monday through Friday program and then get them connected with either Josh Brown or Matt White or a good quality production yeah. for, for it as well. But it might be a way to help some, especially the LPFMs to help supplement the income a little bit. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you another thing that I wish Robert, I, sh I wish I could have coordinated a little more with Robert. We're trying right now, I've got a couple pastors that come in and do live, or not live, they'll do pre-recorded the week of, and the whole thing is to have that new fresh message, like come in, don't take your Sunday morning service, come in and practice your Sunday morning service by doing it to a radio audience. And that way, just like Jay Vernon McGee has always done, right? He spoke to a radio audience. And that's what makes his program more impactful, I believe, is that he, was, he would come in, sit in a room, preach his message, right? He had his Sunday mornings too, but so we've invited pastors. This was my engineers. We're like, we can do this if you can get people to do it. And I said, I'll go get people to do it. And so we tell them it's a great way to practice your Sunday sermon, you don't have to come up with something new, but just come in, but adapt it for a radio audience so that the listeners feel like you're talking to them because that's what podcasts are, right? They're talking to that audience. Yeah, and I just thought of something. You know, it's harder as well, too, if you guys don't have any staffing like that. Yeah, Like, yeah. I'm the senior pastor, my brother, he's got a full-time job. Obviously, I'm full as well. You know, it's harder. Yeah. If you had another volunteer that was helping with that stuff, yes, then it's I, I think you're able to put a guy on and do a minute or something. It, but unless you have, unless you have that, it becomes tougher. So, it, it, call Micah. Yeah. <laughs> Just a, another interesting qu uh, question is female uh, uh, broadcasts, uh, either doing like we got Bryson. Debbie Bryson doing a, a 30 second or 45 second uh, for women. And yeah. That one time we had a, another gal do a 30 minute. Uh, so do you see that as community too, or is that's that's kind of well? And that sometimes. that's one of the things. Like, I feel like being the community relations guy. Yeah. Is that the blessing? What's that? <laughs> being being the community relations guy, um, I'm missing out on half of ministry because I don't go to women's ministries. You know, we have uh, Nancy De DeMoss Wolgamuth on, on yeah. yeah, and we have Cheryl, obviously, has her program, but other than that, we don't have, well, we have Johnny, Eric, we do, we run Johnny's three-minute spots, um, yeah, which are great, but uh, are they part of the community? Absolutely. <laughs> they love Jesus, too, right? Uh, but uh, I don't focus on that, and I'm not out looking for women's programming, I guess. Yeah. Did you? Good. Good. <laughs> Anybody else? You know, I wanted to get some non-Calvary programs on our station a few years ago. We had the Greg Laurie Harvest Crusade in our area. So I called up Calvary Philadelphia, and they gave me the list of all the churches that participated in the Harvest Crusade. 
and they highlighted the ones that they thought were solid. And we, we had the graphic artists make up a mailing and everything. We sent them all information on coming on our station. Zip. Zip. It's no so, response, so huh? so hard to find. Yeah, a couple tire kickers. Yeah. But nobody. Now, this was putting on long-form teaching programs. Yeah. It seems like Chuck Smith ingrained in us we want to be on the radio. Every Calvary guy that I know wants to be on the radio. It's, you know, but non-Calvary guys, it's so hard to find it. So I really like these ideas because uh, this is something I, I hadn't thought about. But uh, maybe uh, you go to other churches that don't want to commit to such a long-form program, but they'll do something short like this. Well, and what's great about it is you're going to them without, you're not asking them for anything. Because I've started out by saying, hey, I just want to meet your senior pastor. Oh, great. He's going to ask me for something. Tell him I'm not available. <laughs> right? But when you can go to him and say, I'm not asking you for a thing. My hands are actually out. I want to give to you. I want to give you an opportunity to give a shout out for your church on K-Wave. And, and they're like, oh, okay. And then once we started it, it was easy to get it rolling because then I'd say, hey, I'm going to send you a couple episodes of, of, you know, Come Together Live, or I'll send you a couple of these one-minute scripture of the day. And then they're like, oh, well, I can do that. Okay, yeah. So it's a great way to intro it. And from that, I've gotten interest for a 20-minute, 20 26-minute show. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Your site already went. <laughs> <laughs> Bill just didn't want to walk all the way over there, Scott. <laughs> Scott Phillips, KIDH, Radio Idaho. Uh, radio voice. Is that your radio voice? <laughs> no. no. <laughs> Do I have one? I don't know if I have one. Um, this might be a little bit outside of what you're ready to answer, but I'm just curious the solution you use for, like the, the one pastor, right? He did the one-minute spot from his car, from his phone. Do you just use analog phone lines to get that content in there, or do you have you know various sources? So that wasn't... Mean, yeah, yeah, that wasn't the one-minute spot. That was actually our Come Together Live. Okay. And I, I started to tell you, we don't usually call people last minute, but I think this time it was David Trujillo, you know, not throwing a Calvary Chapel pastor under the <laughs> South L.A., you know, David? <laughs> I think he was like, oh, I forgot. <laughs> so, But you know what? You look at it, and we got that testimony. This was all God's plan. That was God's plan. That's what radio is so Holy Spirit. I love it. So we don't usually, but Andre, Andreas and Pastor Terry, who is on that, are two of my go-to guys. I always know Andreas is available on Wednesdays because that's the day that he's off. He's bivocational. He has a, an auto repair or auto body repair shop. But on Wednesdays, that's his study days. He goes, Mark, anytime you need me on a Wednesday, you call me. So it was a Wednesday. So we, I told my assistant, I said, Phil, call Andreas. And so that's why... Uh, it was like that, and Andreas just didn't want to pass the opportunity up. He's like, yeah, I'll do it, I'll do it. And he thought he could make it home, and he couldn't. But that, we use Skype. So he's just on his phone. Okay. Yeah. So it's just normal, whatever he would normal, use. Normal, yeah. So usually what we do is we'll do a, a Skype connection right into the studio, and then we ask them usually to have their earbuds in. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And then you're, so that's the Come Together Live, and then the one-minute spots, they're all pre-recorded. Yeah, those, those are pre-recorded. We usually have people come into the studio. Okay. During COVID, um, my boss didn't want any pastors even coming into the studio, um, and so we would take our recording equipment out. We bought some a little bit of recording equipment, and we'd go down to like Mike Maiello down in Mission Viejo, and we recorded him, and we recorded some others, and unfortunately, we had to reuse some, but um, Lance was really big on, no, I want fresh stuff when we can get it, so we would go out and, and get it. Thank you. Tim Collins from uh, The Lamp here with uh, Mark Ramirez. And uh, I just have a comment on the unity between other types of churches. Uh, I came from a Baptist church before Calvary Chapel, and I didn't know about Calvary Chapel. Yeah. Um, and uh, when I came from them, I looked at their statement of faith, of which I realized that they didn't really believe in the Holy Spirit. Uh, he was only there to tell you what the Bible said. That's all the Holy Spirit ever did. That was what they would say. And uh, I didn't realize that for about 11 years, yeah. being there, 10 years. Very hard when you come to that realization that far in, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so then I see Calvary Chapel, and I figured out basically who they were. And uh, I looked them up, and I looked up the one near me. It was one mile from my house, this one. <laughs> yeah. Right? 
And uh, I'm like, oh, well, let's look at their statement of faith. And it's the same, like almost identical. Yeah. So immediately I'm like, well, my church doesn't believe in the Holy Spirit. And he's quite important to me. <laughs> and so then uh, I immediately had to go meet with the pastor and ask, hey, I just have one question for you. Who's the Holy Spirit? And he gave me a 45-minute sermon on the Holy Spirit it, immediately when I just, like, came to him on that yeah. out of the blue. It was really amazing. Yeah. And then I had one other question for him. Follow. Do you believe that? Well, of course I do. I said, okay, I'll be there on Sunday. Yeah. <laughs> okay. That's awesome. So that was the thing, right, is that the two were identical. When you read the statement of faith, they were identical. Yeah. Pretty much the same. But they had vastly different beliefs. Mm. And you couldn't tell that just by looking at them from the outside. Yeah. You had to know the pastor of each one. Yep. And so uh, that's what I would caution you. Don't just look at the statement of faith. Ask a little question. When you meet with them for, yeah. <laughs> for coffee, right? Right, right. Hey, you know, just get a feel for the Holy Spirit. Get a feel for, you know, various aspects of that. Yeah. Whether they really believe it or if it's just what's written on their website. Absolutely. So. Absolutely. I always ask uh, people... One of my favorite questions to ask is, okay, on a scale of one to ten, one being an ultra-conservative Baptist and ten being a holy roller, where do you guys lie? Every Calvary Chapel will say what? Why? Because Chuck always taught us balance, right? We're a five. And so that's, a question, that's another question I love to ask is where do you see yourself on that? And one guy was telling me, he goes, well, I never put the Holy Spirit in a box, I was talking about a certain event, and I said, where's this going to run? Because he seemed a little bit like a holy roller to me, you know? And I said, okay, on this event, where are you going to lie? And he goes, somewhere. He goes, I, don't, I never put the Holy Spirit in a box. I go, good. <laughs> Just try it if you want to laugh, right? Um, but he said, it'll be probably between a five and a seven. Okay, I can deal with that. Five and seven is good, right? So... So, you know, I guess like most of us, we like expositional teaching. I had a preacher uh, contact us, a pastor, and wanted to be on the air. Yeah. And I asked him to send me his teaching. It was 45-minute teaching, and I measured it to 26 minutes. He hadn't mentioned a scripture verse until through the 26th minute. And he wanted me in our station badly. And I said, you know, so I talked a little bit about that. He didn't like what I said. Yeah. But what do you do in those kinds of situations? Because... Uh, if, if you're committed to expo expositional teaching, what do you do if, if he's not an expositional teacher? Well, first of all, we have Greg Laurie on our station, so we're not committed to expositional. <laughs> Just kidding. I love Greg, wow. but I'd say that to his face. <laughs> Greg's coming for dinner tonight. <laughs> no, we love our expositional teachers, but I've had, I've had uh, yes, uh, Deaconess, Rwanda wants to be on your station, and we were wondering how much it costs, and I, and you know, I'm like, okay, well, I don't want to just shut this down. I'll go vet them and go through this, and and I have to have the same awkward conversation that you have, and just say, I'm sorry, I don't think it's a fit. I do appreciate you listening to our station, and I appreciate your interest. You know, I ask them how they found out about K-Wave, and usually, a fun thing to do is say, what's your favorite program on K-Wave? Because a lot of times they're like, uh, um, uh, uh, yeah, they don't know because they're not really Odyssey. listeners. Yeah. That's my favorite program. What is it? Adventures in Odyssey. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's not a Bible teaching program. Anybody else? Yeah. Another community we're reaching is uh, Spanish. We do, a, again, a two-minute Spanish de Devo. Yeah. And the guy now is, uh, he's uh, at our church. We, he has a service at 4 p.m. But, uh. Then I told them, well, start out in English first, because we just went right into Spanish. Yeah. And tell the people, listeners, if you have neighbors or over who speak Spanish, and yeah. you know, and then he'll go into his little devo. devo. So that's a little thing we did. Yeah. So, community. Cool. Yep, community. Absolutely. Absolutely. Good. You know, I've helped a lot of people build radio stations over the years, and sometimes they say, well, why would we want to have a radio station? And who do we put on there? And I say, why don't you ask some local churches? 
well, I don't like that church, or I don't like this church. <laughs> you know, but I've told uh, so many people, the nice thing about having your own station is you get to decide what you're going to put on the radio. That's true. One day I picked up my daughter and her friend from the airport. We were driving home, and her friend said, Oh, Mr. Lukeman, how do you pick what songs to play on the radio? I said, that's very easy. If I like it, I play it. <laughs> and so if, if I have a latitude where I might promote a concert at a church that I wouldn't put that pastor on as a teaching program, mm. but I'll, I'll promote a concert at his church. And this has given me a new idea because there may be churches that eh, I probably wouldn't put his teaching program on if he had one, but letting him give a one-minute devotion, that might be okay. So yeah. think about it. Boy, this microphone sounds horrible. What are you doing back there? <laughs> well, I think you're doing a wonderful job, buddy. <laughs> it's his voice. That's why Bill's at 3.30 a.m. on our station. <laughs> That's prime time for uh, bakers, by the way. Bakers and garb. I learned that from Tom Keller. This is, this is why I love our conference. We, we take things every single time. Tom said, why wouldn't I put people on the overnight? There are bakers, there are people in prison. Put good teachers, you said, in the overnight. Don't put junk. Don't put a filler. Put somebody good in overnight. Thank you, Tom, for that. And we did that. We've packed our clock with teaching instead of less teaching. So thank you. Um, okay, so... We're going to have a break in a minute, but I want to go through my list again. So how do you sound? We started with that. Looking at your website, looking at programming. The next one is liners and short spots. So we were talking about those one-minute short stuff. But liners, too, is um, I, I have this thing that, again, I want us to sound really professional. And there are production companies that will do this work for you, and it doesn't really cost a whole lot. Rick McConnell does it, as well as John with New Life Productions. We use John. He does our spots. They sound good. They're professionally done. Um, but what they do in their package is, and we don't use everything. We learned this from Bill, too. Um, but they do stuff like uh, a support, you know, 30-second, uh, like, Supporting Christian radio is important. So you're not saying it. The production is saying it. And they're doing a soft giving message. Hey, support Christian radio if you're enjoying it. I like the way that John does it. I know that Rick does it the same way. You use Rick. So um, you pay a, we pay 75, and then we don't use all of them, right, Pat? We don't use the 60 seconds. But we use him to do our church spots. We do every quarter we rotate two spots, so Calvary Chapel on Myrtle Beach meets at this time, and that's your station. Promote your church on your station, right? Um, and then we have upbeat music on Friday and Saturday night, and then they do those, and we have those professionally done. Get the best professionally sound you can. It just, it, it sounds like we know what we're doing. They don't know that we don't know what we're doing, <laughs> but it sounds like, right? So... Yeah, so here are some of the one-minute shorts. I have this. I'll give it to Pat. You can uh, write them down, but these are the ones that we air. Decision Minute. I highly encourage you to have Decision Minute on your station. Billy Graham, their organization, they're phenomenal. They're testimonials. It's that encouragement that Finney was talking about. Um, Answers in Genesis, Ken Ham's people. We lo I love that. Well, uh, a while back... Uh, Henry Morris's group, his son, what's his son's name, Pat? Uh, it doesn't matter. More, the Morris group. They have Back to Genesis, which is another science one minute. I love these. Uh, the stuff that they come up with is just wonderful. Um, then we have Learn the Bible in a Year. How many of you have that? Maureen has that because I programmed her station. <laughs> um, it is a two-minute take you through the entire Bible in one year. It is done by the Bible Museum in Washington, D.C. It is professionally done. It sounds great. It's a two-minute spot. Put it on there. Put it on a couple of times in the day. They're getting the actual Bible read to them. Um, so that's Learn the Bible in a Minute. Then we have Health Freedom Minute. Um, 
Jan Markell, anybody know who that is? Understanding the Times, you should really have that on the weekend as well. That's a great program. Uh, Understanding the Times, well, she interviewed this woman, Health Freedom Minute, and they give some interesting, especially through COVID, where, and I, it's not that it's political, but it's giving you information that the mainstream media is not getting, and it's less than one minute. So you're kind of just giving people a little information. That's the Health Freedom Minute. Then we have Plugged In, that is by Focus on the Family, and it gives, uh, it, it's every day, right? And it's a different topic. Like they'll do a movie review or music review, and it just, you're just adding a fresh content. Mark, do you do that, Plugged In? No, Plugged In. It's Focus on the Family. It's only one minute, right, Pat? Um, and Mark, you, so it's every day is a different topic. They do video games, like from a Christian perspective. It's really cool that a parent could go, hey, my kid's playing this game. What do they rank it as? Or this movie or whatever. Then we have Agents for Christ. That's a one minute. Glad News for Muslims. That's a one minute. I, I realize we can barely understand Sammy Tanago, but <laughs> we do have it on, right? So... One minute with him, daily walk with Jan, uh, John Randall. So if you have John on, got one minute. A lot of these guys have one minutes, utilize their one minutes and put them. Do you know why? It's because that's the more encouraging. They've, they've compressed it down to one minute, and it really is like hyper encouraging. So if you're looking for what Finney was saying, it's usually in those one minute spots. Um, bridging the gap with Lloyd Pulley has a one-minute spot. Um, it's really good. Ed Taylor has abounding grace. He has a one-minute spot. And then we have Recharge Minute with Brandon Beeler, and he is a younger guy. Pat's really been doing a good job of trying to get, we've been trying to focus on more on younger kind of millennial teachers for our station. We got plenty of old people like me, you know, gray hair, and how can we get the next generation guys on the station a little bit younger? And now they don't, for the most part, have a weekday program. Most of those guys have weekend shows. And you know what? Pat sits back there. He vets them. He listens to their program. He asks Josh or um, Matt White, hey, what do you have new? What guy is that we can listen to? Our goal is to try to not have any duplications in our clock. It's tough. Now, Damien Kyle we have on twice on the weekday, but we're doing our best to have not have any duplication. So those younger guys um, are in, in uh, we have Mike Chaddock, um, then we have a couple other younger guys that are on. Um, then the two minute, that's Knowing God with Greg Laurie. Anybody run that? So that's in the same folder. You download it for the month. So when you go into Greg's folder on the FTP site, you can see Knowing God, and it's a two-minute. And again, it's hyper-encouraging. Then we have, there's Outlaw Radio, Zach Adams. He has a two-minute. And then Daniel Fusco also has a two-minute. So this is an entire list of Phil. I wouldn't say it is Phil, but it is Phil. Um, that's all encouraging. And the science stuff is cool. Um, and again, it's making your station sound really good because this stuff is kind of newer, it's fresh, they're producing it every month, it's coming out and it's fresh. So, okay, we'll be back at, oh, yes, what do you got? Oh, I will come to you, don't move. Let me do the work. We also have that website, ccradioministry.org ccradioministry.org. There's some information on how to build a station, how to get a station, but there's a listing of stations. There's also a listing of programs. And we can put this listing of the short things on there also, because I don't think we ever did that. We, 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 were, we were going to and we didn't. So if you have a program, go to that website. If it's not listed there, use the form to tell us about it. Yeah. If you have a station, stations are all listed all around the country by state. If your station's not listed there, if there's anything wrong, let us know about that. Or and you have a radio program. Yeah, radio program or a radio station. Yeah. And we'll put this list on here. And if, if, you, if you know of something 
that, that's not on this list, let us know about it so we can add it on there. Yeah. One last thing about, this won't be in the short, but I'm not sure I'm going to get it to another time, but Christmas is a, is a unique time. So Christmas Eve, starting at 12 p.m., all the way through Christmas Day, is com all complete special programming. Um, radio theater, lamp lighter theater, do you know about those? They are awesome. They're some of my favorite to listen to. Um, and over the last seven years, we have a folder now, and it might be on our flash drive that we brought. Um, we have built an entire Christmas listening. So the entire a day and a half is all about Christmas stories, um, Odyssey. Uh, they have a marathon, Adventures in Odyssey. It's a couple of hours for the kids to listen to. Again, it's just bringing that, that whole time in there together. Totally different. It, it takes a lot of work to do that. We pre-program that. We have to insert that, change the clock for, our, but it's worth it to do that. We get, we get a lot of feedback from people who say, man, we just sat around the radio for the entire, you know, for Christmas. How cool is that to have them listening to your station? For, yeah, yeah. So, um, it is.